Hey everyone, so in this one we're going to be covering the database, Bubbles database, just the basics. So this is going to be a begin level video, so if you already know how to set up your database in Bubble, then this might be a little bit too simplistic for you, so by all means go ahead and skip to the next one. If you're not too sure on setting up Bubbles database, then this is probably the place to, to start off. Just before we do go on, I'm going to assume, even though you may be a beginner at Bubble, but you know what the different tabs are for workflow, data, design, etc. And if not, if you click on this little question mark icon in the top right, you can see that you've got your some basic videos that you can watch at the beginning there. Okay. So assuming that you that you that you know the core, let's get started. So if we go into our data tab, and what we get started with is a pre-built user type user data type again we're looking under the, the data types tab and this is a built-in type for use for authentication for users so this is how you will do your your login and your sign up and all of that type of thing will revolve around this particular type and it's only got one field in there for us at the beginning which is the email field now that is going to be the id field for each user effectively and also we don't have any other fields in there other than these built-in types for modified date, the created date, the slug, we won't be going into that. Behind the scenes, however, there is a password field, but Bubble isn't exposing that to us at all. So once we write the password to the user, we never see that again. Okay, And that's good practice anyway. We can add any type of fields that we like to the user to suit our application. So let's create one for first and last name. So let's click create a new field and we'll do first name okay and then we're asked for what type of field in other words what type of data do we want to store in there now you've got quite a few but the most common ones are text which is just to store general text values a number any types of number whether that's uh, whole numbers what we call integers or whether it's float floating point or decimal numbers uh, the date obvious yes no which is a kind of a friendly way of saying true and false okay and then image you may use quite a bit in terms of storing any type of image file so in this case we just need to store the text so we'll click text okay and then that's done then we'll create another field and we will say uh, last name again that's going to be a text and we also get this option here that says that this field is a list in other words you want to store multiple values of this particular for this particular type so we've only got one last name so we don't need that but we may find that useful other times so let's create that one let's say that we also want to have the user have an avatar okay so in this that case that's going to be uh, an image okay and then we select that if they have more than one again we can store that as a list so let's say that in our application we want to allow them to select whether they would like a dark or a light theme okay and that is something that we will be doing in this app so what we can do there is just to say let's say we call it theme dark and that's going to be a simple yes or no so in other words it is is it is either going to be dark or it's not going to be dark so we'll create that and what we can do is we can say by default the user setting is that they don't have the dark theme it's something that they've got to set so we'll set a default value and then when we create the user automatically we don't have to set this field it will just get set to no by default okay so then so that's the user type okay and that's something that we will use throughout the system but let's say we want to create our own different types in there our own uh, custom data types so we said originally that this was going to be like a kind of a, a a sort of crm and also include inventory features in there so we can create new types here. So let's say I'm going to create one for inventory. Okay, and I'm going to create one for customer. I tend not to put plurals in my, the names of my types. So let's have a look at inventory. So let's say we want to create a new field. Notice as well, by the way, that we have a different type of built-in field for our other different data types besides user so user we don't get a creator field but with our inventory and our customer we do which just that gets automatically stored as the user that's logged in at the point that that record a record of this type gets created so you can see who created it when it was created and let's last time it was modified if you want to create which user modified it that's something that you'd have to do yourself okay 
So let's say we create a new field and we will say that let's say we want an SKU. So that's going to be text. So that's like the product code. And then we want a description. Again, that's going to be text. And let's say we want to know how many we've got in stock. So we can say on hand. Okay, that's going to be a number this time. It's going to store a quantity. And let's say we want to know the price. Again, this is not how we would do it in setting it up live for our system. This is just purely going through this on a conceptual basis. So, create a new one. Let's say we're going to store a cost price, and this is going to be a number. So, we've got those fields on there. And let's go to customer. Let's say that we say name. And we're going to store that as a text. And I think that will do us for now. Okay, so we've got a couple of custom data types in there. Now let's say with the inventory, let's say that we wanted to have a group. So we'll have a new type of data and let's call this i-group because we could have customer groups. These ones are inventory groups. So we'll create that and we will just give it a name. Okay, that's gonna be a type text again. Okay, so in our inventory, what we can do, we can create a relationship between this inventory type and the iGroup type simply by storing a field. So we can say create a new field and we're going to call this a group. And we're now going to link it to a group of the type that we just created. So if you look as well as the native types that we've got here, if we scroll down, we can see that we've also got the ability to select a different type of data. So we can select iGroup and we now have a field which will store a group of another type and that's how we create relationships in in bubble in bubbles database so let's say that we now want to add a new one now obviously we'll have add the ability for the user to add these into our app of course but for now let's say we just wanted to put one or two things in there so let's say i want to create a couple of groups so the way i do that i go over to the app data tab okay and make sure i've got the data type that i want so let's see on the left I can click new entry and then let's say the name is going to be electrical widgets and I can create that. Okay, now if I go and edit this now, we get a new field which is this, the unique ID. So the unique ID is designed to reference this record everywhere else. So essentially on the inventory type where we've got the group, what I actually what actually gets stored in there is the ID of the group that we want okay so we just created one in there let's create another one let's just call this mechanical widgets and again each one's got an ID so let's say I don't want to create a an inventory item so let's go and do the same thing select it on the left click new entry and then let's say I don't know the cost price is one and let's say this is uh, electrical widget supreme x8 and the group again we can't just type in the group we can change the search field i tend to stick with the unique id so but we've got to specify it in here so we don't have that yet so what we can do is just create that with that inventory item go back to our groups select our electrical and let's copy the unique ID now again you wouldn't do this this is not how the user would create data this is just how we're doing it manually obviously you create the ability for the user to to add their own data directly in the app so let's go back to our inventories edits the item and where we say group we can now paste the ID in okay now if the, this was an invalid ID if it wasn't didn't represent a record of the type of I group then it wouldn't allow you to pop that in. So let's say we've got 42 of these on hand. Let's say the price is, the sales price is this. Let's say uh, ELWSX8 as our SKU, as our SKU. And again, if we notice here, because we created this before, now we've come back and edited it. It's also created its own unique ID for this particular inventory type okay so that means we can reference this inventory type in other data types if we needed to so we'll save that 
and let's say we want to add one of the other type of groups so let's edit this one again just let's so let's just uh, double click on it and then copy it and let's create another inventory item here let's uh, paste the group straight in there so that we've got that right away let's say the cost price is six on the description is a mechanical mechanical uh, widget uh, I don't know artist whatever and let's say we've got 12 of those on hand the price sales price let's say and MWRT whatever six six seven seven eight one okay and then we can create that again okay so we've got two groups and we've got two items each one assigned to a particular group so we've got a relationship between the two now what we could do as well if we wanted to is going back to our data types on our group what we could do is to say create a new field and we can say let's say we're going to have a field called items and this time the field type we're going to set is going to be inventory and then what we can do there is to say this field is a list so that way not only can we link the item to the group that it belongs to but we can also hold a list of items that are held within the group now by the way this is not a great example because this is not how you would do it and i will go into why you wouldn't do it in the future but i just want to show you what where and why you would use lists okay but you do use lists quite sparingly and there are good reason for that but at least this uh, shows you an example of what you could do so we'll add it in there anyway for now okay so let's say we now in our app we wanted to uh, get a list of inventory items we wanted to query or search the database for our items and display them on the screen in front of the the user how would we do that in bubble how do we do searches so we go to our design tab and we have what we call under containers a repeating group and this is how we display lists of data to the user so we will just draw that in there okay uh, this is not we're not building out the app here so this is you know i'm not going to go through any in-depth design let's just do the basics so repeating group a let's give that a proper name and i tend to use the naming convention of rg just to identify what it is and then what i would call it okay now we've got the minute it's saying a fixed uh, set a fixed number of rows we don't want that and then minimum height of the row we only want to be 40 okay now when you're working with repeating groups in bubble is that you're only ever working with the first cell okay this is just kind of showing you what it's going to look like but you only ever work with the first cell so let's say we want to drag a couple of text items to display the sku and the description so we're going to draw a text value in there and then we're going to draw one in here as well and again i'm not sort of trying to design anything here we're just demonstrating how you do a search how you get data in front of the user in bubble okay so just two two text boxes there so so where we're going to get the data from that's the most important thing how we're going to search the data so what you do generally in bubble is that if you want to deal with the the contents of the repeating group that was what we call in the cell is you deal with the first item which is what we call the first cell and if you want to deal directly with the repeating group you just click anywhere else on within the, the repeating group and then we get our repeating group in the property inspector on the right and then what we'll do the type of content is we're going to say is going to be inventory because that's what we want to search for now we now it asks us what's the data source what do you, which data do you actually want in that group so if we click here we can then say do a search for and this is how we search for and query data whenever we want to query for data in bubble on using bubbles database so we just say do a search for and again it asks us what type so we're going to say we want the inventory and then we can add a constraint which is like a filter do you want to just show certain items in a list we'll leave that for now do you want to sort it by anything any field so we can just say yeah we'll search it by the SKU. we don't want it in descending order and that's pretty much all we need to do okay so that's going to that's going to create as many rows for as many items that are in the in the database at the minute that are in our inventories database in our text boxes we need to tell it what we actually want to display in the text box so what we do we click that we'll just name it because it's just good convention and we don't want to put static data 
in there we want we need to grab it from the database so what we'll do is say insert dynamic data and in bubble we're going to refer to current cells so when we're using repeating groups we're always referring to current cell which is each one of these is a cell so in other words the current cells inventory record that we want to refer to okay and then that gives us a list of the fields we want to select and in this one we want to display the SKU. so in other words we want to display in this text box the current cells inventory record SKU field so in this one we want to display the description so again we'll give it a name t description why we're naming things if you look over here on the left hand side we can see that we get an elements tree and we can easily identify our different elements on the page so we can see they've got a repeating group of items and then what these represent uh, and bubble is very much a point and click development environment so you want to make sure that you can see and identify exactly what you're pointing at which is why naming convention is really really important so again insert dynamic data current cells inventory and then we want the description field okay and that's really all we need to do we just need to preview it here quick preview okay and then we get our two records listed so obviously that's not great design that's just purely just getting the data back and showing how we do it the most important thing I'm demonstrating here is how you would search for data that you've entered into bubble so what we'll do we'll wrap that up there and we'll come back in the next one and explain how we can optimize the database to make sure that we're optimizing our app for performance to work with bubbles database so thanks for watching take it easy and i will see you in the next one